We are often asked, what do you have to do for introductions? Does it have to happen a certain way? Can we do it our way? Do we even have to have introductions? How many songs are used for introductions? We'll answer those questions and much more. Today, we'll discuss tips on the grand entrance introduction protocols. Listen now and discover Wedding Insider secrets for a stress-free, fun, and memorable day. Our podcast helps engaged couples navigate wedding planning complexities while addressing family expectations. Get concise tips on budgeting, wedding party management, ceremony, reception planning, and more. Perfect for anyone planning a wedding, all in 30 minutes or less. This is the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast with Sound Sam, a new podcast for engaged couples concerned about wedding planning and family expectations but want a stress-free, fun, and unforgettable wedding. Hi, I'm Sal Fusco of After Hours Events of New England. In my 40 years, I've performed at over 3,500 weddings. Working consistently keeps me in tune with the wedding industry. Hi, I'm Sam from Atmosphere Productions Disc Jockey Service. I've been DJing since the mid-70s in radio, nightclubs, and thousands of weddings, helping and interacting with hundreds of engaged couples. With over 80 years of combined wedding experience and insider information, this is Stress-Free Wedding Planning with your hosts, Sal and Sam. Listen now for revealing wedding insider secrets, tips, and strategy or lesson that you'll be able to implement for a stress-free wedding. Information that you just can't miss and may just change your life. Take the journey with us from worry and concern to a stress-free and unforgettable wedding day. The Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast with Sal and Sam. Learn more about our experience and journey to help you with stress-free wedding planning in the trailer or pilot of this podcast. In today's edition, the Grand Entrance Introduction Protocols are brought to you in part by Clear Vision Productions and the Wedding Styles of Connecticut Wedding Shows. But first, if you have a question or concern, go now to Facebook and join us on the stress-free wedding planning community and ask away. Your entrance into your reception room is referred as grand, and it's for a reason, everyone. It's because this is when you and your beloved are going to walk into the room for the very first time in front of all your guests. What should you do? Do you have to do it? Uh, those are important questions, right, Sal? So these wedding entrances have to be organized. Now, we are talking about at the reception, after the ceremony, after the cocktail hour, when the DJ or the musicians or somebody introduces you into the room to your guests for the first time. That's the definition of the grand entrance. It's the first time you're going to do it. And of course, how many times are you going to be introduced into a room full of your friends and family? Hopefully just this once. So do it. Yeah. You know, traditionally it's done. I want to say a certain way. I don't, I don't want to say that because it's so different nowadays, but the tradition of it all was you introduced your grandparents, then your parents, and then maybe you had a ring bearer and flower girl, and then you had your bridesmaids and groomsmen locked arms walking into the room. And of course your maid of honor and best man, and then the couple of honor uh, make their big grand entrance. <laughs> Thank you for the crowd noise, Sam. <laughs> a more modern way uh, being done nowadays is uh, just the couple themselves being introduced into the room, not having too much fanfare. It's just about them focused on them. So that's tradition. Modern couples are so much more different. They want to add their own little little spice to it. During COVID, for instance, you and I did a lot of weddings during COVID, but they, they weren't with big grand entrances. It was just the couple. Well, it had to be. You can only have 25 people. Yeah. <laughs> Any more than that, everyone was part of the bridal party. So that's how a tradition has been changed through necessity. For many of my couples, I've kept my forms where we just introduce the couple. And a lot of couples have embraced that and have said, well, we don't want to do the bridal party because we don't want the infighting that comes with having a 20-person wedding party. So that's one reason why many couples stick with just introducing themselves and not even the parents or grandparents 
or anyone else. Couples are also taking the advice of professionals not having a big wedding party because what I've always told every couple is keep in mind everyone in your wedding party has an opinion and if you have 20 people in that wedding party you have 20 different opinions and typically they have never been married and they have no idea how a wedding works but they have an opinion and uh, even if they have been married they only have the opinion of what they saw at their wedding which is only one way and there's so many other uh, ways to view things. There are professionals who do this all the time like us Listen to our advice. Another modern way of doing the introductions is you're still doing a wedding party, but you're using different music to have them introduced. This is something popular that I know Sal has done numerous times. What I always suggest, depending on the size of how you're going to do things with your introductions, meaning, you know, are you going to have grandparents and parents? Are you going to have bridesmaids and groomsmen? And how many are you going to have? I like to, I think everyone has ADD nowadays. And if you don't stimulate the brain, you lose your crowd. So I always say, if you're going to have that group of people, have a song for grandparents and parents, have something different for your wedding party and definitely something different for the two of you. So it's more grand entrance like when you walk into the room. If you end up with some of these larger parties where you might have 10 and 10, well, maybe we should use two songs for your wedding party portion of it. So you're using a total of four songs altogether. Again, stimulating the brain, keeping people interested in what's happening. Keeping your party small is always the best idea. Another modern twist on what you just explained there, Sal, is to have a different song for each couple coming in. And I'll explain it, then I'll give you my my opinion. Many couples want a different little edit for each couple coming in. So if you have five couples, you have five different songs. If you have 20 couples, you have 20 different songs. So you would have a song for the grandparents, a song for the parents, And you could even split that up and have a separate song for each parent. If you're having divorced parents, it can start get complicated. And then a separate song for each member of the wedding party, then a separate song for the maid of honor, best man, or whatever designation you're giving them, and then a final song for the couple. So that's a modern twist on the traditional theme. Now, in all fairness and honesty, I must tell you, that with my company, if you do it this way, we charge you more because it takes a lot of time to edit these songs because it's not just putting the song on at the very beginning and then let it play for 20 seconds in while the couple comes in. It means you have to edit the chorus or a verse that has some sort of meaning. Sometimes the couple want to pick the vehicle selection. So we charge it because it's, it's what we call a customized introduction. So I just wanted to let our listeners know that it can be done with my company. I do charge additional for that. I I used to be kind of a fan of it. If your wedding party wasn't too big, you know, doing the separate songs, that could be okay. You know, it's not too much. It was when you start getting to the bigger groups. Like I did a wedding where I had introduced 21 couples and every one of them had a different song and it gets worse, Sam. Every one of the songs, NSYNC, and uh, it was... uh, (laughs) and <laughs> like oh. Justin Timberlake songs. Oh, so, no. no. So everything was just starting to sound the same as I'm doing the introductions. And I'm just like... Blah, 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 blah. The thing is, too, what you have to consider is, is it really worth doing that type of thing? And how long is the walk into the room to the center of the dance floor? If it's five steps, why are you doing this? Because it's you're barely going to get 10 seconds of the song and it's really has no value. And what happens when you change the music too often, it's just chaos. That's what it sounds like to your guests. So it has yep. to be a decent amount of the song to be played to make it interesting and worth it in my mind. Sometimes doing these, what we call novelty or custom introductions, they may sound good to you as the couple, but how do they sound as a guest? Now, I did one of these, and a guest came up to me, and I must admit, it was it was not a younger guest, because I think younger guests understand the TikTok mentality, where you only play 15, 20, 30 seconds of a song and then go on to something else. And that's what these wedding parties are, are trying to achieve. But from the perspective of your guest, this guest said to me, 
I didn't understand what on earth was going on with the introductions because I didn't understand why you kept changing the song. Now, from a DJ's perspective, it's it's cool changing up all these, but from the guest perspective, they hear the name of the person and then a clip of a piece of music that they have never heard before, and they wonder what's going on. So bear this in mind with your guests. Is this something that your guests are going to understand, or is this something that only the wedding party are going to understand? Yeah, you have to keep in mind the whole picture. Everyone who's in attendance, how are they going to react to this grand introduction? Is it really going to be grand to everyone or just to a few people? Just like you said, Sam, you know, this TikTok era, not everyone's into that. Not everyone understands that. So you may want to find something in between that makes everyone happy. Excellent point. We just covered it with you, the traditional and the modern take on introductions. When we come back, we're going to have a little fun. We've got a list of some different ways that we've seen or that we've heard or that we've read about of different ways that you can do wedding party introductions and have a little fun with it. Obviously, you can add your own spin, but we hope you enjoy the spin that we're going to put on some of these suggestions. So don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Wedding Tip Wednesday is brought to you by Emerge Cosmetics. Are you ready to emerge? Our line of lipsticks, lip glosses, and mascaras was created to empower and become who you truly are. Strong, beautiful, and confident. Use the coupon code SF1 at EmergeCosmetics.com for an instant 10% off. That's coupon code SF1 at EmergeCosmetics.com. Emerge is the true you. On this Wedding Tip Wednesday, follow an email with a phone call. I can't tell you how important this really is, especially in the email age of today, where things are going to spam or not even making it to the other person at all. So if something is truly important, give a phone call and maybe even a text on top of that if you can't get them directly, just to let them know and make them aware that you have sent this email. This is especially true when you're dealing with your vendors. If your wedding vendors need to be updated on something, especially if it's something important, make sure you send an email, follow up with a phone call, and as Sal said, if you need to, send a text as well. That's another tip from Sal and Sam. Wedding Tip Wednesday is available on the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Facebook group page every Wednesday. Join the group for free. Are you planning your dream wedding and don't know where to start? Join us on Wednesday, October 25th from 6 to 9 for the Bristol Event Center Bridal Show, Central Connecticut's newest premier luxury wedding venue. You'll enjoy gourmet food samples, entertainment, amazing prizes, and free goodie bags. Wedding Styles of Connecticut shows are fun, interactive, informative, and have some Something for everyone. For more information or to reserve your free ticket, go to WeddingStylesOfCT.com. That's WeddingStylesOfCT.com. When your wedding entertainment has to have amazing music, be fun, organized, and professional, your choice has to be Atmosphere Productions. DJs, live musicians, custom lighting, and photo booths. As seen on the TLC TV series, Four Weddings, winner of the Wedding Wire Couples Choice Award and DJ Times DJ of the Month. Experience the difference. www.atmosphere-productions.com That's www www.atmosphere-productions.com I'm Dominique Renee, founder of Alon by Dominique Renee Salon. Our nationally trained stylists specialize in custom coloring, European haircutting, bridal, and commercial beauty services. We use only the finest vegan products and stay on trend with the latest technique. Visit my website, alonbydominiquerene.com. That's alonbydominiquerene.com. You're not the same as the person next to you. You dress to reflect your personality. You enjoy customizing your drink at the coffee shop. Even your pet's collars match at least two pairs of your pants. It's only natural that your wedding would showcase your unique touch. After Hours Events of New England gets this. They like to give their clients full artistic control. If you find yourself lost, their team of event specialists can help. They handle everything from DJs, photo booths, event lighting, photography, videography, even efficients. Give them a visit on the web and call today. Let's get planning. After Hours Events of New England. After Hours Events of any.com. 
Don't forget to like and follow on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and be sure to subscribe to their YouTube channel, all at After Hours Events of NE. That's After Hours Events of NE. I'm Andy Kane from Buy Like a Guy, the podcast with the tools guys need to buy an engagement ring or other diamond jewelry with confidence. And you're listening to Sal and Sam on the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. You can listen online and download from iTunes, Google, Spotify, or wherever you get podcasts. And now back to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Welcome back to our discussion about grand entrance introduction protocols. Hi, I'm Sal of After Hours Events of New England, the leader in making your wedding stress-free. And I'm Sam from Atmosphere Productions, weddings with expert knowledge and the difference in quality. We've already discussed with you the traditional take on doing introductions and a little bit of a a modern twist as well. But what are the alternatives? What can you do and what don't you have to do? Firstly, let's make it very plain. You do not have to do introductions. I have done weddings where the couple have just waltzed in during the cocktail hour or waltzed in during dinner and just sat down and started to eat. No introductions whatsoever. You can do that. Nobody is going to say anything different. But for those of you that want to do something a little different, we do have some suggestions for you. A lot of people like to get a little crazy when they walk into the room. They want to do something fun that kind of gets the crowd going. And uh, yeah. we have a list of a few things that have been done right here, Sam. Yeah. So yeah, let's go, uh, let's go. So some people have done so they got a little fancier where it's uh, enter alongside a slideshow with a compilation of home videos, something that kind of you know brings everything together. But then you have bridesmaid and groomsmen who might do something when they reach the dance floor, and one of them is making it rain. Making it rain money, confetti, whatever it may be. Not real money, of course, because that. Of course, of course. But (laughs) (laughs) flash mob. I've seen a flash mob, haven't you? Yeah, I. I think I did one wedding about five years ago when the wedding party came in and did a flash mob dance. Some of the other guests came up and danced as well. It's really cool and different, especially when they practice it and really, you know, put the time in it to make it look really good. I've had people come in single file, kind of marching in type of thing, you know, and and big smiles and waving to the crowd. Have you ever seen single file and them doing something a little different, Sam? Yeah, I've I've seen the what I would call a sports introduction where all the ladies come in and then all the guys coming. So you have two separate songs and they just march in. Uh, I've also done it myself where not separated, but the entire wedding party just all came in. Bill, Jack, Jenny, uh, and you just read off their names and they all came in. So that's a cute way of doing it. It speeds things up and it gets the couple in nice and quickly. That's quick. I I have uh, had this happen more often now, and that's where we would have all the girls grouped up, all the guys grouped up, and they'd come in their own separate songs that they were just going to kind of rock out to as they walked in, which was a lot of fun. And I've had couples do it a couple different ways where we are calling out the names pretty rapidly. And it's all first names, no last names, all first names, making, you know, just a fun environment with the music and them walking in and doing their thing. Yeah, that's two key elements that you mentioned there. Firstly, you don't mention their last names. People have some complicated last names and you don't want to mess it up. That, that's the, the first reason. The second reason is none of your guests care what the last name of your wedding party is. Honestly, they all. don't. They want to know what interaction you have with them. So another way of doing it is what I've called a little love story or, or a little tidbit about the person or the couple coming in if they're married or engaged or something. So just a little snippet that maybe Mary or Judy uh, watches Bachelor or Jim or Tom play golf. That's the important thing. It's just the first name. The The other thing that you, you mentioned was the music. The music has got to be appropriate and upbeat. I can't tell you how many times I've had to say, look, the song that you've picked is too down-tempo for your introduction. It needs to be something that's boisterous. Do not pick Louis Armstrong, What a Wonderful World. It's a (laughs) great song, but don't get me wrong. It's not what should be used for an introduction. I couldn't agree with you more. It definitely has to be energy. What's the purpose of a grand entrance? To create energy, create that party and getting everyone excited about what's happening at that very moment. I want to bring up something that you said you mentioned, the slow song there. 
One of the things I've seen happen a few times in the past is couples asking to use their first dance for the introduction song, meaning when their grand introduction into the room happens, they want us to play the first dance song because first dance usually comes right after the introduction and they think this is just the appropriate time to do it and what you do is you take away the energy of the room so i would always suggest go high energy let's get you to the dance floor let's get everyone standing and cheering for you and then we'll bring them down to being seated and then properly introducing your song and have it come from there and it just makes for a much more smoother transition it, it does i agree with you 100 percent. speaking of grand introductions why not have your pet come in with you now okay. you check with your facility because some facilities will not allow it i mean if you're in your backyard or some other location that's a public you probably can do it so you know have an introduction and your pet comes in with you very different very unique now you've probably heard of a sparkler exit where they use sparklers at the end of the evening why not have a sparkler introduction? Same philosophy, you just flipping it on its head. Again, check with your facility that you can actually do these things because some facilities will not allow you to set fire to their building without any compensation. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to go on the record to say, no. don't do these things. Hot sparklers is never a good idea indoors. It, it gets on never. a carpet or a tablecloth. It can burn. They even have what's called cold sparklers. Again, I'm going to say don't do these things uh, because no, no. even though they show you in a video that you could put your hand over it and you don't get burnt, that's not totally true. Things have happened and things have gone wrong. One of those things to stay away from, in my honest opinion. Why not a theme entrance, though, Sam? Do something with yeah. a like Star Wars, you know, or yep. uh, Harry Potter, maybe. I don't know, anything. Yeah. Those are popular. I've seen the Star Wars, you know, when they have the lightsabers, the couple walk through the, the middle. I've actually done one, but I've never seen like a Game of Thrones or a Disney where they dress up as the characters or a superhero entrance, you know, the Marvel or DC. All of those themed entrances you can do if that's what your shtick is or that's what you're into. Do it. If you're hearing this. Both myself and Sam want to see this one day. Please think about it for a little while and maybe put it in there. What else have we seen? Piggyback rides, yeah, where the uh, yeah. rides made might jump right onto the groomsman uh, is back. I've also seen it where the groomsman had jumped on the bridesmaid's back. Yeah, really, <laughs> and he did it. <laughs> and that's always funny when you see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. What other things have you uh, have seen, Sam? Well, you said you mentioned the piggyback. I I've had a couple of uh, groomsmen ride their little kid bikes into the room. And that, that's kind of funny. But again, you, you got to set that up a, a ahead of time. Another one that you have to set up is switching clothes. I haven't actually seen this at a wedding that I've done, but I've seen videos on, on YouTube where the groomsmen switch clothes with the bridesmaids. And it's hilarious. If you're not expecting it, it really is funny. Again, you have to plan this in advance so that it, it's right, or it's just going to look uh, really silly. Now, some other ways that you've probably seen at a wedding is carrying props or sunglasses. When I got married, God knows, 30 plus uh, years ago, that's what <laughs> we did. We gave all the members of the wedding uh, party sunglasses to come in. We thought it was revolutionary uh, back in 1990, <laughs> but now it, it, it's, it's something that almost everybody does. It's a great prop. A simple pair of sunglasses, have everybody put one on, and, and not just a regular pair of, uh, of Foster Grants. We're, we're talking about silly glasses right. there. You know, you can carry props, anything from a boa to a silly hat. I've heard of people coming in with signs that say, hey, they just got married, or uh, look at that fool over there. It's cute. Those are little things that, again, you plan out in advance. The great thing about it is, you can be as unique as you want to be. You can't just think of this thing last second and try to throw it together because it's just not going to come out right. And especially when you're changing clothes where the guy is going to wear the dress and the girl is going to wear the, uh, the suit. The thing is, you have to time that right because you may mess up the whole introduction because you weren't ready. So these are things you just want to make sure you plan ahead of time. 
realize there's a timeline for everything and just be be able to put on a, a kind of a cool little show when you walk into that room. So it looks like you were very organized and you knew what you're doing. That's why it gets its name, Grand Entrance, and they should be grand. Even if it's a simple walk down the aisle, it needs to be practiced, it needs to be perfected because it's going to be the one time that you're going to be introduced into the room. That's what your grand entrance is all about. You're listening to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. So there you have it. We just shared with you grand entrance introduction protocols. Does it have to happen a certain way? Can you do it your way? Do you even have to have introductions? How many songs are used for introductions? Now, as you spend the next week planning your wedding, if you want me, Sal, or our community of stress-free engaged couples and wedding experts to answer any wedding-related questions, then join us in the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Facebook group. Once you're in, go ahead and share your concerns and worries, and we'll let you know if you're on the right track or if there are some things you need to work on. The link to join us is in the show notes of this edition, or go to Facebook and search for the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Community. Remember to do something nice for someone today. And if you can't, then do something nice for yourself. If you've enjoyed what you've just heard, leave a review and share it with a friend or someone who would benefit from this information. Until next time, it's TTFN. Ta-ta for now. Thank you for listening to this edition. A new edition is released every Wednesday. Subscribe and get it first. We'll catch you then. Ciao. The Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast is produced and copyrighted by Atmosphere Productions in association with After Hours Events of New England. Sponsored in part by Clear Vision Productions and the Wedding Styles of Connecticut Wedding Show Series.